Welcome to Biz Help For You with host Candy Messer. Entrepreneurs like to focus on the big picture, like profitability, success, and a smooth running organization. But there always seems to be those little things like taxes, employee compensation, laws, regulations, and more. Now you can get the answers you need in one place. Join us today as we break it all down for you. Now, here's your host, Candy Messer. Hello and welcome to Biz Help For You with Candy Messer. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you found the information on last week's show, how to monetize your brand on social media, informative. If you are unable to join us and would like to listen to the show, links can be found on our YouTube and Facebook pages, as well as multiple favorite podcast platforms. If you'd like to receive notifications on when our podcasts have been uploaded, please like and subscribe. If there are topics you'd find beneficial or questions you have, please feel free to reach out to me at media at abandp.com. For the next few weeks, the format is a little bit different as I recorded 10 podcasts in one day. I will be combining two recordings together for the next five episodes. Because the amount of time for each was less than usual, I didn't read their bios during the recording. So let me give a little bit of information about my first guest now. As an entrepreneur herself, Beth understands the myriad of financial matters that can hold business owners back. A guru whose ideas and solutions are fueled by decades of experience in bookkeeping and small business administration, Beth's mission is to serve as the backbone of your business so you can flourish, shine, and connect with your clients. Beth has a passion for teaching, connecting, and helping people realize their full potential. When she's not geeking out over a new networking group, new technology, or QuickBooks, Beth is a human mom, dog mom, and music lover living her best life in the quiet woods of Southern New Hampshire. So let's listen in to the interview I did with her. So Beth, welcome to today's show. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. And I'm excited. This is going to be a fun topic. I know there's a lot of listeners who are going to be really keen on what we're going to talk about because they want to implement it as soon as possible. Um, but before I get into any questions that I have for you, I would love for you to tell me just a little bit more about yourself and how did you begin your business? Sure. Well, I began my business. I have a bookkeeping business and um, I became an outsourced bookkeeper. Mm. When it, was, when it became time that I realized I needed to be working for myself, I, I became what I thought was going to be an outsourced bookkeeper. And I thought I was going to work, you know, maybe 35 hours a week <laughs> and, you know, maybe make more money than I was making before when I was working, you know, a million hours a week for somebody else. Mm -hmm. And that was just the intention. And then um, I started getting close to that 35, 40 range. And I said, oh, geez, I need to hire somebody. Mm -hmm. So I brought someone on for like mm, 10 hours a week. She was still in accounting school. And, um, and, and that was great. And I don't know what happened. We started growing. Okay. And then I went, a friend of mine dragged me to this conference. And it was a three-day conference. And I tell people that I walked into that conference as a bookkeeper. And I walked out of it as an entrepreneur. Mm, nice. And from there, it was all about the mindset. I built the business. I now have uh, a team of 10 nice. and they're all over the country and we service small businesses. Um, and, and it's just, it's just been an incredible journey. Nice. I'm a bookkeeper too. I don't I know that. So it's, my story sounds very similar to yours. I have I think nine employees right now too, and they're spread in a few different places too. So after we should chat at some point as well to connect on that. Um, but in terms of the mindset, you did mention, you know, I, you know, walked in as bookkeeper and then I came out an entrepreneur and my mindset. So how is it that you got this mindset that you can take vacation from your business? It was from reading a book. I had networked with a CPA who literally this conversation changed my life. He, we were talking about uh, profit first. Mm -hmm. And Mike Michalowicz, who, mm -hmm. by the way, is my absolute favorite author of all time, in, in case I don't mention it enough. Um, but we were just discussing that. And he said, have you read his other book, one of his other books, Clockwork? 
Mm. And I said, no, but I always love a great book recommendation. He's like, get on it. So I read Clockwork and have you read it? I haven't read that one. I have read Profit First and I'm on his email list as well. Oh my goodness. Get on Clockwork next. So the very first chapter I read, I literally felt like he was living in my house, watching me every day. Mm. It was the, you know, I'm working a million hours a week. I'm, I'm drained. I'm this, I'm that. And, um, and just, just all the things that we go through as entrepreneurs. Right. And the rest of the book, it's very similar to E-Myth in terms of building a business, not a job. That's another great book, by the way, build a business, not a job. Um, and, and I read this book and it just sparked something in me. And then I, um, you know, in clockwork, he talks about taking a four week vacation Mm, and the whole idea is being able to build your business and systemize so that you can step away from it. It's not just about taking a vacation. It's about being able to choose what you want to do when you want to do it. Um, being able to take time off, being able to, you know, let, let the business run without you. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I, I, of course, circled back with that CPA and said, oh my gosh, I read that book, life-changing. I need to start. What do I do? He said, oh, well, I, I heard about this woman who's the head of Profit First in Canada, and she uh, puts together this program for bookkeepers and accountants um, called Accelerate to Advisor. Mm-hmm. I know that one too. <laughs> oh my gosh. Have you done it? <laughs> I was in her master class or whatever, you know, the boot camp, yep. the five days or whatever. Yes. <laughs> I was on day one. And you know, you go on those things sometimes and you just expect that they're going to sell. Right. You're just like, okay, like I'm not actually going to get any real content here. They're just going to sell to me. The content she was providing, as you know, was incredible. And I ended up, I, day one, I was like, where do I sign? I, I don't care how much it costs. I need to put this investment in. This is what my business needs right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that set me off on this, this journey to really systemize my business and, and let it run without me. Right. So you've talked a lot in the last few minutes too, about the different things that you did, you know, to be able to take these vacations. And so someone's listening is like, great. Like I want to be able to do that, but I wear like 20 hats for my company or clients are going to expect to be able to reach me. And I think even if I take vacation, I'm still going to be working. Like, so what are the things that you would tell entrepreneurs that they should be investing in so that they can take that vacation? Uh, Absolutely. So I think that, um, you know, I sort of umbrella it under three different topics, which would be investing in yourself, investing in your team and investing in technology. Mm-hmm. it's all, all three of those things are just, are, are so important and you do need to make an investment, an investment right. in money and investment in time, because mm-hmm. none of these things are going to happen on their own. And we all think that we don't have enough time to invest more time to build our business, right? We're so stuck in working in our business. Mm -hmm. that we're just doing, 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 we're putting out fires, we're fixing this, we're fixing that, that we don't think that we have the time to step back and look at the big picture and say, what does my business need? And, and so to invest that money, invest that time is going to work out in the long run. It's not, it's Mm -hmm. not a quick overnight fix. There's no quick overnight fix to be able to, to take a vacation. Um, But in terms of investing in yourself, um, I always, I I love coaching. I mean, we just talked about, you know, my coach, her name is Lisa Campbell. um, And, you know, as you know, she's just, she's phenomenal. And she was the right fit for me at the right time. Right. So there's so many coaches out there. Some are great. Some are not. Some you fit with, some you don't. Some are the right timing and some are not. So you really need to dial in on what it is that you actually need right now and where you are in your business. And you want to be able to connect with a coach that A, you connect with just personally and B, someone who's going to meet you where you're at 
So I really say you need to, you need to put that investment and you're going to have sticker shock if you've never hired a coach before. Um, but if you find the right one, then you're going to make that money back over and over and over again. Exactly. So, I mean, you were talking about investing in yourself and then investing in team, right? So how do they go about, if they haven't even hired someone yet, finding that ideal team member and that whole process, because that might scare some people too. Like no one's going to do it as well as me, you know, or, you know, whatever it is, that is kind of maybe that mental block for them too. But how would you help them in that area? Sure. Well, there's a, there's a couple components to that. One would be the systems that you're going to put in place when, mm-hmm. when we talk technology. And the other would be getting, getting to a mindset of, again, what do you really want? Mm-hmm. Do you want this business to rely on you completely? And do you want to have this be your legacy? Or is this just a job to make some income for a few years and then you're done? And so one of the things that Mike Michalowicz talks about, um, and I've made my own sort of um, forms of this over the years, is creating a a what I do every day Mm -hmm. and getting so, so, so detailed and getting into, you know, down to responded to employee regarding Slack jumped into my email, responded to client, went into QuickBooks and did this for an hour, um, got interrupted by a phone call from this and you know, put together a lead magnet, went on a networking call. Every single thing that you do, you write out and how much time it takes you. And then you go with the next step to say, what are the things that I don't need to be doing? Right. What are the things that I, like in the very beginning, what do I feel, com- what do I feel comfortable passing on? How, how do I feel about each of these tasks? I think that's a really right. important thing. Right. Um, you know, for, for us, like we're, we're, we don't want to just be workers. We're right. not just looking for a paycheck. We want to do what we enjoy doing. Um, I actually added another category. How much emotional energy does this task take from me? Mm-hmm. And so then you start going through that list of, okay, what can I delegate right away? And you build that that list. And I think it's really, really important to do that before you even think about hiring that first person. Um, You know, a lot of people think I just need another me. And that's not necessarily the case. Right. Um, You might say, oh, I just need, I I need an admin or, um, you know, whatever it may be. But in, in so many cases, maybe you need a social media person. If that's where you're getting your income from and you want to expand on that and it's a time suck for you. Um, right. Maybe you need an operations manager to really, really run the show. That might be a little further down the line, um, but maybe at this point you just need a VA. Now, some people I hear sort of think that a VA is like the be all end all of, of this is what you need to hire first. That's not necessarily the case. For me, I hired a bookkeeper first to start taking some of the weight off of me. It's not as scary as it sounds. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It just can seem overwhelming at first, especially if it's the first hire. But um, And then going into technology too, I know you said that I'll have to figure out, but what if someone is a little afraid of the technology because they themselves really aren't tech savvy? Yeah, yeah. I run into this a lot um, with, with new clients, which I'm sure you do too, who've done everything on paper, everything's Mm -hmm. in a shoebox, you know, they're, they're doing everything sort of old school. Um, They hire people to take care of the technology piece. Mm -hmm. There are VAs who specifically work in say Dubsado or HoneyBook or ClickUp or Trello or whatever it is you might want to use, right? So bringing on that VA, you're not making a commitment to say, I'm hiring you for 30 hours a week. You can hire this VA for project work. You can right. say, um, okay, I need, I need this, this project done. And then they will show you how to use it. Mm-hmm. And so there's so many nice tools out there. I mean, I'm probably like you, a huge fan of automation whenever mm-hmm. possible. I- And so to be able to pass off things for somebody to build 
even if you're not ready to bring on somebody to maintain it over time, that's a start. Exactly. Well, and I think, like you said, you don't have to be the expert in everything. You can find out, ask people that you know, you know, what they use for the certain process that you want, you know, what technology they may use. Of course, there's software out there that also compares different things that give you your pros and cons. So it does sometimes take a little bit of research, but in the long run, you don't want to be the one having to do everything in your company. Like I've told my staff, I want to be unnecessary. Right? Yes. And <laughs> I'm working on it. And some clients have been with me for a long time. I mean, I've had my business for quite a while, still think that they have to talk to me. And I also will tell them like, if they send me an email or try the call and it takes me a while to return a call, like my staff can help you with this and they probably can do it quicker than I can because of all the things that are on my plate. Or like today I'm doing this whole event, you know, I'm not even available today. So if they were yeah. wanting to talk to me, I'm not available. So that's what I want to be. I want to be unnecessary. <laughs> I can actually enjoy taking some time off as well. So I'm going to be implementing this even more than I have been. So, but yeah. I know we're running short on time too. So I do want to ask you about what offer you might have for the listener. Sure. So I have a, I put together and this is, this is kind of funny. It's, it's a little, it's a little off topic, but for starting entrepreneurs, it can be hard to afford bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. Even though you know it's something you need to delegate, you know that it's not your zone of genius and you may not know what QuickBooks is. Um, I reference QuickBooks because that's my particular specialty, but um, I have a course um, to teach people to do the sort of basic DIY on their own <laughs> small business QuickBooks. And I like to make it so that so that it's tangible, so that I'm using words that make sense. I'm not using accounting-y words. Okay. And, Jargon. Know, like so yeah. um, I use words like stuff a lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so yeah, so I can offer your listeners 15% uh, off of that course um, by using the code POD at my website, which is bbabookkeeping.com add a slash DIY to get to the course page and drop in the coupon. Perfect. And we'll definitely put all that information also in show notes. So anyone can go back and, and pull that information. But besides that, is there any other way you want listeners to connect with you, whether it's social media or a phone number, email, how would you like anyone to reach out? Well, considering that I have had to draw some pretty sharp boundaries I'm not going to share my email or phone number. Okay, sounds good. I encourage your listeners to think about that as well. Mm -hmm. um, however, connecting with me on social media is awesome. Um, I love the back and forth on there. Um, check out our website and um, all of our links are on there as well. And I think you'll have them in the show notes. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, it's great to connect with people and just, just know who's listening. And even if I you know, can spark the idea to somebody that yes, you know, you can go away mm -hmm. for two weeks and make money while you're sipping pina coladas on the beach <laughs> and your business is still going to run, right. you know, then, then I've done my job. Right. And I know with as much as we work as entrepreneurs, we do need to have that time off in the calendar and looking forward to having that time off for some rest and relaxation. I know it's really important. So I appreciate your taking the time to be here today and even talk about you know, yes, you can take a vacation, even if you're an entrepreneur running your own company. So thank you so much. Thank you. Now, let me tell you about my second guest, multi six and seven figure entrepreneur and coach Sherry Kaufelt supports service based entrepreneurs to get out of the feast or famine cycle of getting clients and finally build a business that allows them to live their bucket list now. Sherry believes it is possible to build a business that gives you the freedom and flexibility to work when you want, from where you want, with clients you love. In fact, she's living proof, having sold her home and packed up her possessions to travel the world, taking her business with her. And she's never looked back. 
Leveraging her Freedom Finder formula, her clients build a business around their lifestyle they want and the income it will take to achieve it. Through Done With You and Done For You services, Sherry's clients build a solid foundation for success and plan and implement marketing strategies that magnetically attract ideal potential clients that turn into ideal high paying clients. Now let's listen into the portion of the interview with Sherry. Sherry, welcome to the show. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. I know this is going to be a fun topic to talk about, but before we get into any questions that I have for you, I would love for you to just tell me a little bit more about yourself and how you even got into the business that you're in. I would love to do that. So I started out my career as so many of us entrepreneurs did in corporate America, I was there for about 13 years and made the switch to being an entrepreneur 22 years ago, which seems like yesterday in some ways in an eternity and others. Mm -hmm. um, and when I became an entrepreneur, I couldn't just start one business. I had to start three businesses. So I ended up having three businesses, uh, taking one of them to seven figures that I ended up selling, uh, having a consulting business that I ended up shutting down and kept my coaching business for that entire 22 years. Mm. So I now work with uh, service-based entrepreneurs to help them create businesses that allow them to live their bucket list now, which is what I, I'm going to talk about and take their business with them. Nice. I'm really excited about the whole bucket list thing. I'm sure all of us have things on our list that we want to do and we haven't really gotten to yet. So I would love for you to just even explain to you know the listeners how it's not a bad thing to have a bucket list and maybe what they should be putting, even if they think they're never, ever going to accomplish it, what should they be putting on their bucket list? Well, there, there's no one thing to put on your bucket list. Your bucket list is your bucket list. Mm -hmm. For some of my clients, it's being able to be a full, uh, a near full-time mom and only work from nine to three and be able to be full-time mom uh, when their kids are home. For other people, it's me, for me, it's traveling full-time. Mm -hmm. I ended up kind of what, what got me to this um, kind of version, if you will, of my business in 22 years, I've had a lot of versions of my business was um, several years ago, I had a bit of a knock upside the head moment when I realized that I wasn't living my bucket list. Mm -hmm. I'd said for years I wanted to travel full time and I had built my business subconsciously or unconsciously by doing live speaking and live networking. Mm -hmm. So if I was gone for a month, then I didn't get the leads, right? So right. I, my business didn't grow. So when I, once I got that, that knock upside the head, I always say, once you know it, you can't unknow it. Mm -hmm. So I, and on, honestly, I felt out of integrity because vision and living your, your vision is something I've taught for years and years. Right. So I literally put the stake in the, in the ground. And within six months, I had had completely changed the marketing of my business to go 100% virtual. I sold my home, packed up all my possessions, and I was traveling internationally about nine months of the year. And obviously, the pandemic kind of gave me a right turn, but I'm kind of back at travel now and, and live in life, to be honest. So whatever, whatever that lifestyle is that you want to live that's your bucket list. Mm -hmm. And you can build a business that fits into that lifestyle. And that's what I love helping my, my clients to achieve. Because I think sometimes we feel like the bucket list is, okay, I'm going to go to Australia. I'm going to skydive. I'm going to, it's like an event, right? Where what you're just talking about is it could be a lifestyle, you know? So maybe- help people understand how they can, you know, turn into that one, two, three, I want to accomplish these few things into an actual lifestyle. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, one of the things on my bucket list was going to Greece. Well, I ended up spending a month and a half in Greece and was literally on an island steps from the beach, sitting on a patio that had overlooked the beach, doing my work every day, and then going out and enjoying my time and in whatever, you know, on the island that I was on was Paros. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's the, the thing, the thing about creating your, your bucket list life is you have to start with your vision. So in terms mm -hmm. of, of kind of how do you get there, you have to start with your vision. And this is true, to be honest, of any business, not just if you right. want to live your bucket list now, it's really true of any business. You have to start with what's the, what do you want your life to look like? And I mean, your whole life, I mean, your relationships, right your um, environment, your wealth, your health, and your business. Because at that point, once you have clarity on what that lifestyle is, what your life looks like, then you can build your business to fit into that life instead of taking over your life. Right. And who of us 
as entrepreneurs, hasn't been there at some point in time where a business has taken over our life. It mm -hmm. happens. So right. that's absolutely the, the absolute first step that you have to take is mm -hmm. get clarity on your vision. Right. Well, because I was thinking while you were talking too, you know, there's so many reasons why we might be putting mm -hmm. off, you know, living the bucket list, right? We're entrepreneurs and we're busy and it's hard to get away from the business. Or we think we're young with young kids and we're not able to, you know, or, you know, dot, dot, dot. We don't have the money. We don't have, you know, whatever. So talk to the person who thinks, well, I'll get to it someday, right? It's not right for me now. I don't have whatever, you know, it is that I need for that, but I have plenty of time ahead of me, you know, to accomplish that. Yeah. I, I call that next weeking yourself to death, or it could be next month or next yearing yourself to death. Mm -hmm. You know, there's always a next week or a next month. And, and for some, some of us, we look back and the years have gone by right. and we haven't done what we really said we wanted to do. And it's, it, the, the trick is, setting your business up in a way that allows you yeah. to live that, that lifestyle now. So right. once you have that clarity, it's really not about changing anything in your business. It's about staying true to the things that are going to help you create that lifestyle. And I, right. I talk a lot of times people will say, well, but I, I can't, you know, I can't travel full time. I use my example. So when you choose your marketing strategies, choose marketing strategies that align with how you want to live your life. Mm -hmm. So when I work with my clients, for instance, I always have them use four criteria to choose their marketing strategies. There's the basics of where do your ideal clients hang out? Because obviously we have to go where our clients are. And then there's how much time do you have to invest and how much money do you have to invest? Because that can drive what strategies you choose. Obviously, right. if you're doing kind of guerrilla marketing, bootstrap marketing, you're not probably going to do paid ads right out of the out of the gate. So those are kind of givens. But the two criteria I use with my clients that makes the difference on you being able to live your bucket list and take your business with you are the last two. And that is do what you love. Hmm. What do you love doing around marketing? And don't let anybody tell you that you have to do anything to market your business. If I had a nickel for every guy, every person that's told me I have to be on social media, you know, I'd be, I'd, I wouldn't have to be doing my, my business anymore. And the truth is there, you don't have to be on social media. You don't have to do anything. There are hundreds of ways to grow your business. Mm -hmm. Choose the ones that you're excited about, that bring you joy, that fit into the, to, to what you want to do with your life, which is the fourth criteria, by the way, is make sure you choose strategies that fit into the lifestyle you want to live. That's mm -hmm. the story I just told you is I ended up where one of my key marketing strategies speaking the way I was doing it at that point didn't fit into the lifestyle I wanted to live. I was doing live speech, speaking on stages. I couldn't take off and go somewhere for a month doing that, but I can be here with you mm -hmm. and I could speak and I can get my message out there and I could be doing this podcast from anywhere in the world. Right. So That's that allows me to live my bucket list. So is there a difference between like having a personal bucket list and as a business owner, having things on the bucket list that I want to accomplish, or is it really create just one list, whether it's something you want to accomplish on a personal level or something you want to do on business level? I, I've never thought about it that way, but I think that's a great question. Uh, my belief would be that it's one bucket list. So you may have a bucket list item that is, I want to speak in an auditorium of 50,000 plus people. You know, that if you're, if you're a speaker and that's one of your, your big dreams, you may want to have a, have a bucket list item. You want to get on stage that big. Um, and it may be one of the things that, that you work towards in your business. Right. Um, but it doesn't have to be two separate lists lists. I really do believe that what you do in one part of your life, you do in all parts of your life. Mm -hmm. So when you create a vision that integrates all of those parts of your life, you can have the most joyful life. Mm -hmm. Okay. So someone's listening now and they're thinking, okay, this sounds awesome, right? Like I do want to have the bucket list and I want to start living it, but I'm going from zero, you know, I haven't done anything yet. So what are a couple steps maybe they could take to start implementing something? Cause they can't really like with your example, just leave today, you know, and take off a month, you know, but what are the steps they can start to implement to get where they want to be? Absolutely. And this is where, what it comes in that, that it's, this is simple but it's not easy, mm -hmm. right? So there's, there's four things that I would tell you that, um, that you can do to get started. And this will help you in 
all areas of your life and in particular in your business, I use it for. So the first one we've already talked about, it's get clear on your vision. So I have a process I use um, for visioning. I'm happy to, to give that to anybody that's interested. Um, there's tons of things you can do, vision boards, whatever works for you. Get clear on your vision for your life and how your business fits into that. The second thing is keep it simple. You don't have to start with, I want to take an around the world trip if travel is your vision. Um, I use what I call the rule of three. So set three bucket list goals that maybe aren't that be all end all and make a plan. Keep it simple and make it be if you want to, if you want to eventually go around the world and you've never been out of the United States, maybe it's take one international trip next year. So keep it simple and use the rule of three. And this rule of three, you can use in all areas of your business. Choose three marketing strategies, um, you know, set three goals. It, it really works because our brains are wired best to take information in, 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 in lumps of three, if you will. So start with your vision, keep it simple, um, use the rule of three, be consistent. That's the third, the third tip I'll give you is take little steps, daily actions turn into big results. So it's that doing a weekend trip and then a, a week long trip and then a month trip if, if travel is your thing, set it up in bite sizes so you make progress and you can see what's possible. Mm -hmm. And then finally, bulletproof your tracking and your follow up. So if you, if you, if it's around your business in particular, if you have a goal of getting on that 50,000 person stage, then make sure you're tracking your progress towards that goal and you're setting milestones so mm -hmm. that you can see the progress that you're making and actually getting you closer to that goal. So again, it's right. simple, but it's not easy. And those four mm -hmm. steps, they sound pretty simple, but you might need some support along the way to kind of make it happen, some accountability. Right. So while you're talking to, I was thinking like timeline, like what do you recommend somebody in terms of how long they should be, you know, estimating to be meeting these goals, right? Like same thing. Someone's going to be like, okay, I'm going to put on my bucket list. And in five years, I'm going to be able to go on this trip, you know, versus doing something sooner. So what would you say about that? I, I think that that's a fantastic question. I, my belief would be do short-term and long-term. So mm -hmm. there are bucket list things that you could do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, I, maybe you've never been to a particular place in your backyard. Um, do figure out a plan to do that this weekend. It's Friday. How can you do that this weekend? Start living in the moment and those moments can add up to big things. Mm -hmm. Then for the, the goals that are a little farther out, like I was saying, you know, set a goal that within six months, you're going to have booked tickets to the first international de uh, destination, or within six months, you're going to have booked that hundred person speaking event. Mm -hmm. And with a year, within a year, you've booked the thousand person speaking engagement. So you've got some milestones in between um, that really get you to where you where you want to go. Uh, I do a planning process that that focuses on on a one year and a five year plan, uh, and usually those two those two kind of buckets, no pun intended, um, will give you a pretty good idea of once you have a clarity on the one year, how do you get what's what's next for the five year, right. And sometimes challenges come up, right? Things are unexpected. And so you have this plan I'm going to do, like you even said, COVID, you know, kind of affected your plan, right? So what if we have this plan and then, you know, something happens and someone gets sick or we don't have the finances or whatever, what would you say about how to handle the items on the bucket list? Make a new bucket list. Uh, there's, the only thing we can count on is change. And the pandemic was was tragic for so many of us. Mm -hmm. And there was also a lot of gifts in what we've been through as a world. Mm -hmm. And one of those, I think, is, is the time to reflect on what's really important to us. And so when life throws you a curveball, I don't know what the, the, uh, the analogy is, but when life throws you a curveball, figure out how you're going to catch it mm -hmm. and turn it into something else mm -hmm. and start, you know, just start with the, the little things are so important. We, we make it up that bucket list has to be, like I said, for me, the around the world trip. Okay. And I haven't been around the world, but I've been some amazing places mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I've enjoyed every one of them. What's that for you? What makes you get up in the morning? What makes you really get excited about, about thinking about how you're going to create it? Because mm -hmm. that passion for what's on your bucket list is going to be one of the drivers 
that's going to have you keep taking small actions to get there. Right. And accept change because change is inevitable. Exactly. Yeah, it doesn't mean so it'll much. never happen. It just may not happen when you thought it was going to. Exactly. Well, I know we're running short on time for what we have for today. So I would love to ask if you have an offer that you would like to share with the listeners. I do. So uh, most of my clients are service-based entrepreneurs. And the way that we find most of our clients is by getting on a call with them. And whether it's, you know, we call it a discovery call or an enrollment call or whatever you call it, um, finding out what their needs are, what their problems are, and then offering them the opportunity to work with us. And what I hear all the time is, how do I get people on my calendar? Mm -hmm. So I have a free gift called 17 Easy Ways to Fill Your Calendar with Potential Clients. And it'll be in the show notes, a link to that. And what I recommend that you do is take a look at that list. And there are some things on there that you could literally implement in 15 minutes. Knock a couple of those off the list. And then there will be some others that you're going to choose, no more than three, remember the rule of three, Mm -hmm that may take a little bit more planning and implementation to get them up and running. And again, if you use those same four rules we talked about in terms of the keeping it simple, the rule of three, the consistency and the, and the follow-up, in no time, you'll have those consistent leads coming in that turn into calls on your calendar, that turn into high paying clients. Nice. And if anyone wants to connect with you, how can they find you? I would love to support you. I love talking to entrepreneurs. Um, I try to do my best to keep my calendar open for some slots. You can go to connectwithsherry.com and uh, we can talk about where you are now, where you want to go and figure out a plan for your roadmap to live your bucket list now. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for being a guest on my show and sharing your expertise in this area and helping us all think about our bucket lists. I'm sure there's a lot of people who are already jotting down notes, but I appreciate your time. You're very welcome. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you found these topics interesting and that they answered some questions about how to take a vacation from your business and live your bucket list now. If you have any additional questions or comments, be sure to reach out to Beth and Sherry at any of the links they shared, or you can send us a message at media at abandp.com. And would you please share our show information with those you know? I'd really appreciate your support. I hope you can join us for the next episodes mistakes startups make and simple profit accelerators. And please remember you can connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And my website is abandp.com. You can find the podcast posted on multiple favorite podcast platforms, including Google, TuneIn, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Until next time, have a great week. Thank you for listening to Biz Help For You. Please join your host, Candy Messer, again next Tuesday. Have a terrific week.